Okay. So we woke up this morning to what I thought was a flood in our garage. Showed it to Peter and Peter said, no, that's not a flood, that's condensation. I thought that was a little bit of a stretch too far, but actually come and have a look and we'll show you why it definitely is condensation. Don't put the light on, put the light on. Right, you take it to where the condensation is. Okay, Pete, talk us through it. Well, you can see um, if Lucy pans round, you can see just how wet the, um, the floor is. And if you come round here, you can see this is no, this is no rainstorm. This is little beads of yeah, yeah. condensation. Um, and it's so, so much that... Oh, look here, you can see it really yeah. clearly, really clearly here, where it's clearly not run in. Yeah. Because it's not a, it's not a puddle, is it? Yeah. Okay. So, <clears throat> what I said to Lucy was we, we need to get a little bit scientific about this so i've got the imaging camera out and um yeah it's been a little bit blowy during the night but this is interesting because there was some um um bubble wrap here from unwrapping our, our rocks and it was covering and insulating the floor so that floor measurement there is 10.4 all right and where it's condensing at the moment it's 11.7 you can see on the um there you go, look, 11.5, 11.4 on the imaging camera. So this is cold concrete. So having established it's cold concrete, we then look at the actual conditions out here. And if Lucy looks at my hygrometer, <laughs> she will see yeah, that... Just, get that just, yeah. There we go. It's actually 14 degrees outside. The relative humidity is 92 and a half. And the dew point is 12.9. So any surface below 12.9 is going to get wet. Uh, the absolute at the moment is 11.3 grams per cubic metre. So that's really wet. That's the kind of moisture level in the air that you would expect in midsummer. That's almost tropical moisture, 12 grams per cubic metre. It's down near summer tropical moisture levels. We don't expect to see that in midwinter. So what we've got at the moment is a very cold concrete floor and so much moisture in the air that the floor is literally soaking. Everything is just wet. So I think it doesn't take a great leap of faith to realise that a lot of houses at the moment are not going to be very well heated and I've recently done some building surveys. In fact, I did a survey um, for a, an organization a few weeks ago where the floors in the house were sopping wet. And I was able to show that exactly this was happening. Um, the air is just so wet at the moment that if you're not running your heat flat out and keeping the building at at least 15 degrees, with all of the surfaces within that building at 15 degrees, you are going to get condensation. And no amount of dehumidifiers and um, opening windows and so on is going to dry that house out. We're at a point at the moment where you just are going to get wet. On a day like this, surely opening windows is one of the worst things that you can do because you're Absolutely going to bring that is. very wet air inside. Yeah, it, opening the windows right now is just going to um, is just going to let wet air into the building. You, you, it's just a waste of time. Um, and I think the only way that you would keep a dry house at the moment is by keeping wood fires, log, you know, um, wood burners coal fires, whatever, that do remove some of the moisture and, and draw it through. Um, but at the end of the day, the total moisture content of the building is, it just can't drop. All you can do is just wait until conditions change. Um, the We are in very, very unusual times. And I think we're going to see more and more of these damp problems starting. And this is really brings us round to breathability. And if, if your building is completely breathable, 
at least it's got a chance to recover quickly. And we can't talk about preventing damp. What we can talk about is recovering from it and stopping it from being a problem. Um, but what you're seeing here on the floor in the garage is the kind of thing that happens inside people's walls. Uh, and they don't realize that this is going on all the time within their walls. This is what rising damp is. So we do have to be very, very careful that we don't overreact to these sorts of climatic conditions because there's nothing you can do about it. You know, those are the scientific facts and, you know, it's wet. The air is full of water and, you know, you can't do anything. You've just got to suck it and wait until conditions change a bit. So you're basically saying, folks, if you wake up this morning and you've got, you know, if you've got a, a wet kitchen floor, if you've got a tile floor and it's wet or you've got condensation, your walls feel a bit wet, don't panic. It's just Correct. some very, very wet conditions in the air that are condensing. Yeah. And when you said about water um, condensing in the walls, what would what would then happen to that? What would the symptom? Is that something that that will show up in a in a in a few days, or is it? How, how does that? Yeah, it's yeah. if your walls are completely breathable, any moisture that condenses within that wall will find its way out. Um, if there's enough condensation, it fills the the gaps between the particles making up the wall. In other words, the little gaps between the sandstone grains or whatever. Um, and it finds its way out via capillary action and then evaporates at the surface. If, however, at the moment it's too wet, it's accumulating moisture in the wall and you've got gypsum plaster on the inside, for instance, that gypsum plaster is going to start to look like it's soaking wet and it probably is soaking wet because that water is trapped there and the gypsum won't let it go. Uh, similarly, if you've got cement pointing or cement render on the outside, that water can't go anywhere. So the wall's going to get wet physically wet and I think we're going to see in spring if the weather ever changes uh, we're going to see a lot more people with damp problems because this water is accumulating in there and there's no way that you can get rid of it so you know the whole thing about breathability is about giving yourself the best chance to recover um, from moisture like this it's almost as though your house is being submerged in a flood and if you go back to some of the buildings that we've worked on in Hebden Bridge and up in Yorkshire, uh, the ones that recover the fastest from flooding are the ones that we've made completely breathable. And we've used lime on the inside, lime on the outside with breathable paints. And when those buildings flood, capillary action removes water from within the building, it evaporates and it's gone and the building dries out. So the the, the point that I'm making here is that your building can dry out quite quickly if you give it a chance. Uh, don't panic and you know the worst case scenario is that if it gets very wet you may have to take plaster off and and, um, and redo in lime but this is an extreme case and I'm hoping that people will realize don't panic just keep the heating on and don't let it condense within the walls. The warmer the walls are the less chance of condensation. As you've seen here, we're only getting condensation on a garage floor because the concrete is below the dew point. So the important thing is that your wall should not go below the dew point, and the dew point at the moment is about 12 degrees. Mm. So your walls need to be heated. They need to be above 12 degrees. Yeah. So don't turn the heating off. And we've had very cold conditions Prior, prior to, to this, this yeah. the last yeah. day or two, it's been minus, minus two and three at night. So this concrete has got very, very cold. It's got very it? cold yeah. and it's just warming up. And as you can see, where I, I just moved that bubble wrap that's been insulating the concrete and it's colder underneath the bubble wrap where it's been insulated from the warm air that's coming overnight. So, you know, that's really interesting because, you know, effectively now that concrete is going to start getting condensation on it. And it shows that it's not an inflood of water because it would have easily got underneath bubble wrap, wouldn't it? So yeah. that's clearly water yeah. that's condensed onto the floor. Absolutely. But just one further thing, Peter, just to remind people and to remind myself as well. So when, when we're talking about water 
going into walls it's going in as a gas isn't it so what Correct. we're seeing outside now is a lot of water in the air but we can't see it because it's yeah. a gas yeah. so that water hits the wall and it goes through the plaster whether that's lime or gypsum because yeah. it's a gas Correct. and then it hits the cold wall if the yeah. wall isn't heated above the dew point yeah. and then it turns back into water turns back into water and now liquid. it's and a liquid and now it's trapped in the walls <clears throat> because trapped. it can't get out so it needs well, the molecular to... size of that water the liquid those molecules are way too big to be able to get through the gaps in gypsum or cement because yeah. the, the gaps, the pore spacing in the gypsum and the cement are very, very small. Whereas the pore spacing in lime is much, much bigger. So lime gives the wall a chance to lose water by capillary action. You won't get capillary action happening in gypsum or cement. You will in lime, and that capillary action will happen much more quickly in lime because it's very, very open pore. There's big gaps that water can travel through, and then that, that will evaporate at surface when conditions allow it to. Um, and this is the whole thing about the so-called damp, the rising damp thing, that moisture gets trapped into a wall because it can't get out and the essence of breathability is about allowing moisture to travel through a wall through the building fabric and not be trapped so yes lucy you if you've got gypsum you're going to cause problems okay now that's really useful thanks i hope that's been helpful for everybody the long story short is if you've got some water in your house this morning on your floors on your walls on your windows don't panic it's just very wet air today and that that wet air is meeting a cold surface and this is the science behind it by the way you know you, there are a lot of people who will talk on these forums about what they think's going on at the end of the day science doesn't lie and um you know, just getting back to my, my old thing about uh, building surveying and so on and what people say in building surveys, uh, there's no use wandering around here with a, a ping prong meter and, and pronouncing rising damp. This is what you do. You look at the temperature of the building fabric, you look at the moisture content of the air, and then you can make an informed scientific judgment about actually what's going on, which is how I convinced Lucy this morning that it wasn't a flood of water, and that actually it was condensation forming on the concrete. There you go, folks. Last word is Lucy's. <laughs> <laughs> Hope that's been helpful. See you all later.